NASA just accidentally witnessed a terrifying phenomena in Jupiter's moon. In order to unravel the mysteries of the universe, we still have a long way to go. We have all watched alien-themed films. Somewhere in the cosmos, the space-traveling explorers frequently run into them. The first exchange of words is invariably gibberish and the aliens make bizarre noises that range from ominous humming to a buzzing sound that sounds like it may be coming from a child's video game. When it comes to imagining distant realms, the creative imagination runs wild, but it can be frightening if a real space noise can be heard around these supposedly inventive creations. Noises recorded close to Jupiter's moon, Ganymede, have been made public by NASA. Hey guys, welcome back to Beyond Unknown. Today, we will be taking a look at what NASA accidentally witnessed in one of Jupiter's moons. Make sure to stick to the end of this video as we have a lot to cover. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and like today's video. It helps us a long way. Two of NASA's planetary discovery projects, including the Juno mission to Jupiter, just had their missions extended. It has now been revealed that Juno has found an FM signal coming from Ganymede, one of the moons of the gas giant. Even while the discovery does not suggest the existence of extraterrestrial life, it is nonetheless intriguing because it is the first time something of this nature has been seen emanating from a celestial satellite. When it came across the radio source, also known as a decametric radio emission or simply Wi-Fi, the spacecraft, which was launched in 2011, was moving at a speed of 111,847 miles per hour over Jupiter's polar zone. Although it only observed the radio emission for five seconds, that was sufficient to determine its source. The decametric radio waves, according to NASA, have frequencies between 10 and 40 megahertz, but they never go above 40 megahertz. The space agency continued, electrons spinning in Jupiter's magnetic field are assumed to be the cause of the radio cacophony we hear. Since the middle of the 1950s, researchers have been aware of radio waves on Jupiter, but this is the first time the phenomena have ever been observed coming from Ganymede. Geophysical Research Letters, a reputable academic journal, has published the findings. Although noteworthy, this is not the first time that researchers have found unusual happenings on Ganymede. Due to the Galileo probe spacecraft, scientists were able to observe exceptional electromagnetic waves commonly referred to as chorus waves in 2018. Even larger than the planet's Mercury and the dwarf planet Pluto, Jupiter's ice moon Ganymede is the largest moon in our solar system. Strong evidence suggests that Ganymede possesses a subsurface saltwater ocean with a capacity that may be greater than that of the entire surface of the Earth. There may even be ice and oceans layered in multiple levels resembling a club sandwich. Only Ganymede is known to have its own magnetic field, which is generally only found on planets like Earth. The magnetic field is what generates auroras, which are beautiful ribbons of incandescent gas that circle the poles of the moon. There is proof that the oxygen atmosphere on Ganymede is precarious. A new look at features on Ganymede's surface, including craters, clearly distinguishable dark and bright terrain, and long structural patterns that may be related to tectonic faults, were revealed by images obtained by NASA's Juno spacecraft on June 7, 2021. The metallic iron core of Ganymede, which is deep within the moon, is what creates the magnetic field. The center is encased in an icy shell, which is itself encased in a rock shell. The moon Ganymede has been investigated by a number of NASA missions. The most recent mission, Juno, photographed Ganymede in June 2021 in great detail. The moon Ganymede of Jupiter is turning out to be an intriguing world. Ganymede is not just our solar system's largest moon, larger than both Mercury and Pluto combined, but NASA's Hubble Space Telescope has also discovered the strongest evidence to date for the existence of a subsurface saltwater ocean there. According to some estimates, the ocean contains more water than the entire surface of our planet. It's believed a 95-mile or 150-kilometer thick crust made primarily of ice covers Ganymede's ocean, which is supposed to be 10 times deeper than Earth's ocean and 60 miles thick. In the hunt for habitable planets beyond Earth and the search for life as we know it, finding liquid water is essential. 
It was discovered by NASA's Galileo spacecraft in 1996 that Ganymede is the only moon known to have its own magnetic field. The magnetic field produces auroras, which are ribbons of blazing, hot, electrified gas in the areas encircling the north and south poles of the moon. Ganymede's magnetic field is contained within or embedded in Jupiter's magnetic field due to its proximity to the planet. The auroras on Ganymede similarly alter and rock back and forth when Jupiter's magnetic field changes. Scientists from the University of Cologne in Germany, under the direction of Joachim Sauer, had the idea to use the Hubble Space Telescope to discover more about the interior of the Moon after observing the rocking motion of the two auroras. Two different forms of topography can be found on Ganymede, broad, bright sections of ridges and grooves that cut over older, darker terrains. This tells scientists that the tectonic activity on Earth has been exerting pressure on Ganymede's crust. Galileo Galilei, an Italian astronomer, made the discovery of Ganymede on January 7, 1610. The finding was the first time a moon orbiting a planet other than Earth was found, along with his discoveries of three more huge moons surrounding Jupiter. Eventually, the finding helped scientists grasp that our solar system revolves around the Sun, not the Earth, and those planets circle it. In mythology, Ganymede was a handsome little boy who was brought to Olympus by Zeus, who is disguised as an eagle. Zeus is the Greek counterpart of the Roman god Jupiter. The cupbearer for the Olympic gods was Ganymede. The possibility that primitive life could evolve on Ganymede was bolstered by a computer model of the planet's interior made in 2014. The model suggested that saltwater might be present near the rocky seafloor of the ice moon. Scientists believe that the interaction between water and rock was essential for the emergence of life. Ganymede is the largest moon in our solar system with a radius of 1,635 miles. It's larger than both Pluto and Mercury. Jupiter, which orbits the Sun at a distance of around 484 million miles, is roughly 665,000 miles from Ganymede. Jupiter's distance from the Sun is 5.2 astronomical units, and the distance from the Sun to Earth is measured in astronomical units as well. Light takes 43 minutes to travel from the Sun to the Jovian system from this distance. Three primary layers may be found on Ganymede. A metallic iron core at the center, a spherical shell of rock or mantle around the core, and a spherical shell made primarily of ice enclosing the rock shell. The ice shell's topmost point serves as the surface. Under Ganymede's icy surface, researchers have spotted strange bumps. These amorphous masses may represent rock formations that have been supported for billions of years by Ganymede's icy cover. And that ends today's episode. We hope you enjoyed our video. If you did, please make sure you subscribe and leave a comment below your own thoughts. And don't forget to like today's video. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.